Hello, I'm Bert Lancaster. The films you see here cover the history of the Soviet Army as photographed by Russian cameramen during World War II. Now, these particular reels against this wall show how, after the Soviets won back their own country, they pushed westward to release Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Albania, and Yugoslavia from German occupation. One of the bloodiest battles was for Budapest. The Hungarians had attempted to rise up against the Nazis, but the Germans brutally repressed them as the Soviet forces approached the city. The Russians then fought their way into the ancient Hungarian capital. In Yugoslavia, Marshal Tito and his partisan forces threw themselves against the Germans. A daring Nazi paratroop effort to wipe out Tito's mountain command post narrowly failed and Yugoslav partisans and Red Army troops entered Belgrade together. More than one million Red Army men and women gave their lives in the savage battle to drive the Nazi armies out of Eastern Europe. The final victory was not won until the Soviet forces freed Vienna as US troops entering from the West and the Red Army from the East together liberated Czechoslovakia. And now our story from the Balkans to Vienna. falling when the spring of 1944 came to the Carpathian Mountains. For the Russian troops of the Ukrainian fronts driving towards southeastern Europe, it made the going hard. Czechoslovakia, Romania, Bulgaria, and Hungary, and beyond them, Vienna. All across southeastern Europe, Czechs, Slovaks, Serbs, and Croats, and Slavs had learned the meaning of German domination. deportation to slave camps to work for Germany. Hitler's new order. That was the cult of the Superman. That was the mark of the Thousand Year Reich.
Nazis operated puppets, King Boris of Bulgaria. Admiral Horthy, dictator of Hungary. Antonescu of Romania. Their days of glory were almost over. Now it was time to pay their debts. In the fall of 1944, the Red Army assumed the offensive along a front stretching from the Carpathians to the Black Sea. Marshal of Armored Forces, Pavel Rodmistrov, checked the condition of his tanks. During the first weeks of August, the Soviet armies, given the mission of liberating the Balkans, moved into their assault positions in the foothills of the Carpathians. massed 90 divisions for the strike. Facing them were 47 German and Romanian divisions. The two Soviet armies were the second Ukrainian commanded by General Rodion Malinovsky and the third Ukrainian under General Fodor Tolbukin. Tolbuchen and Malinovsky mustered one and a quarter million men and 1,800 tanks. On August 20th, the Soviets lashed at the Romanians on the German flanks. Soviet spearheads drove for Yassi and Kishinov. Within hours, they were motoring across the open fields of Bessarabia. Within two days, they had annihilated 18 of the 25 German divisions left in the Balkans. Carrying deep inside the German lines, escape was almost impossible. The Germans 
lost 60,000 killed, over 100,000 prisoners, over 300 aircraft and 800 tanks and 5,500 guns. For many, there was only one conclusion. On August 25th, five days after the start of the attack, the enemy in the Yossi Kishinov pocket laid down their arms. The few Germans left outside the pocket were now alone. The Romanian peasants were free once more to follow the pursuits of peace. August 23rd, three days after the start of the Soviet attack, the puppet Antonescu had been overthrown. King Michael formed a new government and immediately declared war on Germany. On August 31st, Soviet troops drove into Bucharest. Fight for Romania, the Soviets had paid a great price, 69,000 dead. The Unknown War will continue in a moment. a and &E now returns with from the Balkans to Vienna. For what was left of the war, the Romanian army would fight on the Soviet side. After four years of fighting against the Russians at Stalingrad and in the Crimea. about the disintegration of Nazi Germany and Soviet victories in Eastern Europe. Almost at once, the Romanians formed a popular government aligned with the Soviet Union. the Red Army fanned out to the north, the west, and the south. The Red Army's way was open to Bulgaria. King Boris of Bulgaria had been a longtime friend of the Nazis. He joined the Axis powers even before the attack on Russia in 1941. To please the Germans, he declared war on Britain and later on the United States. The signature surrendered Bulgaria to the Nazis' execution squad. Resistance took to the mountains. Workers, peasants, teachers, defecting officers of King Boris's army, Communist Party members, members of the Farmers' Party, the partisans, fought their guerrilla war for four years. Germans gave their 
a standard answer. This is the village of Bataki in the Bulgarian highlands. The Germans shot every male in the village. To this day, the women of Bataki still wear the black kerchiefs of mourning. Hedging his bets, King Boris had never declared war on the Soviet Union. On September 7, 1944, he broke relations with the Nazis and declared war on Germany the next day. He was a little too late. Sending a formal declaration of war to the king, the Soviets rolled into Bulgaria the same day. There was no resistance. The following day, the Soviets held a victory parade in Sofia. Partisans came out of the mountains to celebrate and to claim their inheritance. Russians and Bulgarians joined in a ceremony at the ship Kapas, where the great-grandfathers of the Russian soldiers and the partisans had fought and died to liberate Bulgaria from the Turks and form a new country. German assault on Yugoslavia had begun on April 6, 1941. to the mountains and the forests. By the end of 1941, the resistance had spread throughout Serbia, Montenegro, Slovenia, and Croatia. Many of the partisan groups were molded into a People's Liberation Army by Joseph Broz Tito, leader of the Yugoslav Communist Party. It became a formidable force, armed in large part by weapons sent from America and Britain. The Germans sent some of their best divisions into this rugged terrain. They 
did not succeed in crushing the partisans. They posted a reward of 100,000 marks for Tito's head. Frustrated and impotent against the partisans, the Germans took the only course they knew. More and more Yugoslavs went into the mountains taking their most precious possessions. Behind them was massacre. The Unknown War will be back after this. And he now returns with From the Balkans to Vienna. Wherever the Germans were able to move in Yugoslavia, they imposed the new order, the rule of terror. But the Yugoslavs kept control of the mountains. Yugoslav's resistance was heroic. They were fighting not only a merciless enemy, but the savage elements themselves. Slowly, painfully, at great cost, the Yugoslavs began to liberate their own land. Planes brought guns, ammunition, medical supplies, and took out the wounded. The Red Air Force brought in over 3,000 tons of military cargo, flying on to the Allied base at Bari in Italy to refuel. gave the partisans hope. On September 21st, 1944, Tito made an agreement in Moscow. It allowed the Red Army to pass through eastern Yugoslavia to attack Hungary. It also arranged for a joint attack by the Red Army and Tito's forces that would liberate the Yugoslav capital of Belgrade. A week 
week later, on September 28th, the drum fire rolled. Marshal Tolbukhin's 3rd Ukrainian Army struck with all its force. October 14th, the Soviets and Tito's People's Liberation Army reached the outskirts of Belgrade. For six days, the Germans fought savagely and in desperation. By street, block by block, the Germans were forced out. By October 20th, the Germans had been crushed. said, without the Soviet Union, it would have been impossible to win over the Nazi invaders. We shall never forget the many thousand Soviet heroes who, in the course of this struggle on the battlefields of Yugoslavia, together with our soldiers, shed their blood and sacrificed their lives. Joseph Broz Tito had come a long way from his ragged beginnings in the mountains. Now it was Albania's moment. The Unknown War will continue in a moment. From the Balkans to Vienna. The Albanians fought in isolation, fiercely, in the mountains. After years of bitter partisan actions, they achieved their own salvation. No Soviet ground troops entered Albania, but Soviet supplies and the Soviet successes elsewhere were crucial. 
Without the Red Army's efforts in the countries to the north, the Albanian partisans might have found victory much harder to achieve. The next objective was Hungary. Under their landlocked admiral, Nicholas Horthy, Hungary had been one of the first to rush into an alliance with Germany. In the fall of 1944, Horthy was the last ally left to Hitler. Never overly solicitous toward his friends, Hitler occupied Hungary in the path of the Red Army advance. The Germans arrived in great force. Fighting began on October 6th, was especially heavy, with German panzers engaged around the city of Debrecen. By October 29th, the Germans in Budapest were surrounded. That day, the Soviet command sent a peace envoy, Captain Ostropenko, into the city to negotiate surrender. Callously, the Germans killed him. day 1945 the Red Army began the process of attrition. Within their trap was a force of 188,000 Germans. The city contained over 300 strong points. Soviets liberated the eastern part of the city, Pest. Malinovsky, commander of the second Ukrainian army, enlisted the services of captured German generals to pinpoint the Nazi positions on the west bank of the Danube in Buda. Sailors of the Danube flotilla, 
under Admiral Gorshkov, later to become Commander-in-Chief of the Soviet Navy, helped bridge the river. February 18th, Malinovsky's men had broken into Buda. The Unknown War will be back after this. From the Balkans to Vienna. The citizens of Budapest were able to come home. Nazis lost 128,000 men killed. respite among the ruins. 140,000 of their comrades had died in liberating Hungary. Ahead of them now lay the Danube Valley and Vienna. Marshal Fodor Tolbukhin, commander of the 3rd Ukrainian Army, made his dispositions. He appealed to the citizens of Vienna to remain calm. concentrated for the final act. It was set to begin on April 9th. The assault came from the air, from the great river, from the land. Fighting around Vienna was intense, though never as destructive as in Budapest. Budapest had been ravaged. Vienna was spared the worst.
cheering, the Germans fought on for a week. But on April 13th, 1945, they finally gave up. It was surrender or annihilation.
liberation of Poland. For the Polish people, the war lasted longer than for anyone else on the continent of Europe and was especially tragic. Six billion Poles lost their lives, many in the Nazi concentration camps. Poland was the scene of great heroism and suffering in the unknown war. Wednesday on Our Century, Lenin's reign raises red flags of terror on the Russian Revolution. Later on Living Dangerously, a daring alpine climb turns a young man into a living legend in Trilogy for One Man, all Wednesday on a and &E. Now stay tuned for Art in the Third Reich on a and &E Premieres, next.